What's up YouTube? Jeff your style OG. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you 10 things I believe you should be paying less for. If you're new to the channel, we release a new video every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, discussing various men's lifestyle topics such as style, grooming, and dating. I invite you to subscribe, tap that notification bell, and join us. And to my returning friends like Edwin Simmons, salute. Now, as we journey throughout our lives, there are certain things that we need or want, but we also have a need or want to have some money left over in the bank at the end of the month. What if I was to tell you, you can have the things that you need and want, but you may be spending too much for them. You actually can pay less. That's what we're gonna discuss on today's video. On today's video, I'm gonna share with you not only 10 things you should pay less for, I'm gonna give you some actionable steps for each item. So without any further delay, let's hop right into it. Being as though this is a style channel, this first area I believe you should pay less may or may not come as a surprise. Stop spending so much money on clothing. What if I was to tell you I rarely spend full retail on clothes, probably around 5% of the time. And there's a couple of techniques I use to do it that you can implement as well. First and foremost, buy your clothes off season. You can easily save 40 to 50% by buying your warm weather clothing during the fall and winter and vice versa by your cold weather clothing during the spring and summer. Another great technique, because trust me, every piece of clothing eventually goes on sale, sign up for the email list from your favorite retailer. You will often get first dibs on great deals. On top of that, go through your closet and see things you haven't worn in a year sell them and use the money to re-up. And another great way to give a fresh look to your wardrobe, I often go through my older clothing and have them tailored, giving a new fresh fit and a new look. And if you feel the need to try a trend, do so at a fast fashion retailer. A great way to try a new trend with no regret. Low cost, lower buyer's remorse. Now one of the easiest ways to have more money in your pocket at the end of the month is to cut down on some of your larger expenses. Or in the case that we're talking about now, the largest expense most of us have. I'm talking about that roof over your head. You should pay less for your home or your apartment. Now take it from me from someone who's lived in the smallest of studio apartments to a huge house. Most of us only spend time in the bedroom, the kitchen, and the place we watch TV. Most of the other areas don't even go to use. Those two or three extra bedrooms you're gonna have for the guests that come over and spend the night, Nobody's staying the night. And not to mention, the more you reduce your mortgage or your rent, the more you reduce the maintenance and other expenses that go along with your dwelling. Lower taxes, lower insurance, lower utility bills. The smaller your home or your apartment, the less time and money it takes to maintain it. Now next up is a modern need that I believe a lot of people spend too much on. I believe you should pay less for your cell phone and your cell phone service. I know a lot of people, myself included, that spend 85, 100, and 120 bucks for their cell phone. Way more than most of us need to be spending. And there's a few easy actionable steps you can do to reduce that bill. One, keep your cell phone longer. There's no need to continuously be buying on an installment plan a new phone every year. On top of that, when it's possible, use Wi-Fi instead of your data plan to keep your data plan costs down. And some companies give a discount for automated payments or paperless billing. And I highly recommend you shop around. See if switching carriers can reduce your bill. I know we all have to have a cell phone and wireless plans, but I believe you should pay less. Speaking of shopping around for a better wireless deal, you're gonna have a hard time beating the plans from today's video sponsor, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile provides their customers with affordable premium wireless service for as low as $15 a month. Mint Mobile reimagined the wireless shopping experience, making it easy and online only. No salespeople, no stores. By cutting these costs, they're able to pass the savings directly to you. But you don't compromise coverage with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile runs on the largest 5G network nationwide, and it covers almost the entire country. With no extra charge for 5G, you can choose a wireless plan that works for your budget without sacrificing quality. There's no contracts, no added fees, and you get to choose how much coverage you need and for how long. And it's very easy to switch to Mint Mobile. All you have to do is go to mintmobile.com slash OG style, choose the plan that works for you, and install your eSIM card. If your device isn't e-compatible, Mint will ship you a SIM card for free. Activate the card and insert it into your phone. You definitely should be paying less for your wireless service. Hit that link in the description and pay as low as $15 a month for unlimited talk, text, and 5G data plans 
from Mint Mobile. Now, earlier we talked about how you should pay less for the home you live in, but you also should pay less for the household items to go in said house, both big and small. And you do that mainly by timing your purchases. Different household items go on sale at different times of the year. Here's where you might want to take notes or rewind the video back, depending on what you're buying. The best time of the year to buy TV and electronics, January and February. Grills and grilling equipment, March. Furniture and small appliances, May. Personal electronics in July. Outdoor equipment like lawn mowers in August. Appliances in September. Outdoor furniture in October. Large electronics, gaming systems, and tools in November. If you time your purchases correctly, you'll pay less for household items. Now we talked about the house, I also believe you should pay less for your car. Don't make the mistake that a lot of us do by buying the most expensive flashiest car you can get qualified for. Let me tell you from firsthand experience, I've owned expensive and not so expensive cars, BMWs, Mercedes, Lexus, but I always make sure I buy one at least three years old. I believe a new car is one of the biggest ripoffs you can buy especially when the three-year-old model looks just like the new model. On top of that, save money by cutting down your finance costs. Save up at least 20% for your down payment. And when you're shopping for your auto loan, shop for the best loan terms, not the lowest monthly note. Now, next up on the list of things you should pay less for is another necessity. Yes, we all have to eat, but I believe you can easily reduce your grocery bill. And let me give you a few of the techniques I use to reduce my food costs. First of all, before you go grocery shopping, make a list and when you get there, stick to the list. And on top of that, don't go to the grocery store hungry. You're much more likely to make impulse buys. And here's another technique the stores might not want you to know about. Look for the items high and low on the shelves. They tend to put the more expensive items at eye level and make them easier for you to reach. And one of the things I make sure I do Compare unit costs for comparable items. A lot of times you buy a higher quantity of a certain item or a different brand of that item, you can save a lot of money. Now, next up is an area I need to do a better job of practicing what I preach. And I promise to get on it right away. Make sure you're not paying too much for memberships and subscription services. Take it for somebody who has every subscription service known to man and belongs to three gyms and barely goes to one, you can definitely waste a lot of money with these things. I mean, do you really need HBO Max, Disney Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime? Who watches all this stuff? And are you really going to the gym? One of the best ways to cut these down, look at your bank statements the last couple of months. Do you have automatic subscriptions you don't use? Go item by item and see if you're really getting the value from these subscriptions and memberships. If not, cut them down and pay less. One of the easiest ways to save money is to shop around. But one of the areas a lot of us don't shop around for are insurance. You need to shop around for lower premiums. Whether we're talking about health insurance, auto, homeowner's insurance. What I recommend you do when your insurance is about to renew, get at least three quotes from different companies. You'll be surprised how much money you can save. On top of that, look into bundling your insurance. When you put your auto, homeowners, and other insurance under one company, a lot of times they'll give you a nice discount. A couple of other ways to save money on insurance, consider reducing your deductible or getting rid of optional coverages you really don't need. Now, another area I definitely have to be guilty about for spending too much money, we all should pay less for bottled water. Or hey, maybe not drink bottled water at all. Now, if you're getting your at least minimum eight glasses of water a day, I congratulate you. But you might be wasting a lot of money if you get it through bottled water. A great way to save money and still have quality water, try a filter container. One water pitcher filter can give you the equivalent of 300 bottles of water. Or God forbid, drink tap water. Did you know that if you drank the equivalent of eight glasses of water a day for a whole year, if you did it through tap water, it would only cost you 50 cents. Yes, you heard me right. That's 50 cents for the whole year. Now, next up on the list is something you'll see probably the first thing you'll come across when you search for ways to save money. It's become a bit of a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's true. A lot of us spend too much money on coffee. Yes, I know you probably enjoy your Starbucks run, but I'll leave it up to you if the coffee is even better. Whether it's better or not, there's definitely no dispute. It's exponentially more expensive than making your coffee at home. Let me give it to you in raw data. Say you buy a cup of coffee to go anywhere from a dollar to five dollars. Brewing a cup of coffee at home would generally cost you between 16 and 18 cents. It's not even close. But for those of you that just have to do your Starbucks run, do this. 
buy discounted gift cards for Starbucks online. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we all wanna pay less for the things we need and want. And I hope I've given you some great strategic ways to save some money. Now, as always, I love to have your input. Let the Style G family know in the comment section if you have some tips and techniques on how they can pay less for the things they spend their money on. And once again, I wanna to thank today's video sponsor, Mint Mobile.